Hey guys, my name is uh, Dr. John Jazeri. I'm a dentist in San Clemente, California. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over the topic of partial dentures, also referred to as partial. Okay, so these guys right here, that's a partial denture that replaces a couple of teeth. This is also a partial denture. And this could eventually become a partial denture. So we're gonna go over and discuss the different types of partial dentures as well. Uh, but yeah, by the end of this video, everything you need to know about partial dentures, we're going to be covering. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to be discussing? First, I'm going to explain to you what partial dentures are. I'm also briefly going to go over the process of how partial dentures are fabricated. Afterwards, I will go over the different types of partial dentures. And this is very important because if you're going to get partial dentures, your dentist is going to propose the different options to you. So you might as well know the benefits and the disadvantages of each different type of partial denture. Afterwards, I'll go over the pros and cons of wearing partial dentures as compared to having nothing or dental implants. Uh, I'll briefly touch upon the cost of partial dentures in the United States, as well as the insurance coverage for partial dentures. And then finally, like all my other videos, I'll share with you my personal thoughts and what I feel like about partial dentures, partials, whatever you want to call it. By the end of this video, you have a clear understanding of what partial dentures are to see if they're the right fit for your mouth and your needs. Okay, guys. So, uh, that's pretty much everything you need to know about partial dentures we're gonna cover in this video. This video will not touch about, uh, discuss implant supported dentures or complete dentures. I'm gonna be placing the links to other types of dentures in the description box below. So make sure to check it out. If you have any comments or any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be starting our discussion of partial dentures in a second, but before I do that, I wanna bring the attention of those of you who are looking for a dentist and currently don't have a dentist or are looking to upgrade your dentist to check out the website even28.com. That's E-V-E-N, the number two, the number eight, there we go, <laughs> dot com, like the 28 teeth in your mouth. Even 28 is a dentist search engine, so you can go and browse based on cities, zip codes, and you can browse to even top 10 lists in certain areas. Uh, go through the profiles of dentists to learn, about, learn more about each one, such as what services they do, their office hours, what they look like, read through their reviews. And when you find a dentist that you like, you can schedule your appointment conveniently online from the website, even28.com, all for free. So go check it out and find your dentist and let's get those smiles uh, fixed up and looking better. I'll see you guys there. Okay, so what is a partial denture, guys? These are partial dentures. I'm going to see a couple models and we're going to get into the details of how they're done. So this would be a partial denture replacing 40. This is also replacing 40, but two on each side. Um, and again, this one's replacing three teeth. So partial dentures replace your missing teeth. They're a removable prosthesis that goes in and out of the mouth. You're supposed to take them out at night so your gums can heal and they sleep and it doesn't damage the teeth. But basically, partial dentures are removable prosthesis. They're not locked in, as you can see. You can take them in and out. And they're intended to replace one or more missing teeth. Okay, so if this is, for example, the set of teeth that you have, a full set of teeth. Uh, if you have this tooth missing, well, you can make a one tooth partial denture to replace that. If you have the front two teeth missing, you can make a two tooth partial denture, two teeth partial denture to replace that. Uh, you can have the front teeth missing, you can have the back teeth missing. The models that we're showing were replacing the back teeth, right? So for example, uh, this partial denture would be replacing the patient's bicuspid. So regardless of which tooth or teeth are missing, you can make a partial denture uh, to replace them. It's very simple to do. It's a simple process, it's very affordable, and it's an alternative to more complex treatments such as bridges and implants, which take more time and are more expensive, but you can get a partial dentures as a temporary basis. So like if you're waiting for your gums to heal and you're planning on getting implants, you can wear partial dentures during the healing process, or you can get them as a permanent basis. Uh, so if you have a few teeth missing and you wanna have something in its place, the dentist can make you a nice partial denture in order to replace them. Uh, depends on the different types of materials, which I'm gonna get into in the next section of the video. But regardless, partial dentures replace one or more missing tooth. As long as there's one tooth in the arch, it's still considered a partial denture. So if this would be your upper arch, as long as you have one tooth, this one or this one, and everything else is missing, it's a partial denture. Once you've lost every single one of your teeth, it's no longer a partial denture. That's considered to be a complete denture. And if you want to learn more about complete dentures, in the description box below, I'm going to put a link to the video of the complete dentures. So partial dentures, if you're missing one tooth, two teeth, three teeth, all the way down to one tooth left in the mouth. At that point, if the last tooth in the mouth is pulled, 
then it's no longer a partial denture, it's a complete denture. And the reason we separate them is because partials and complete dentures are kind of a different uh, process. The complete denture has no hooks or anchors. If you paid attention with partial dentures, there's either metal hooks or plastic hooks, but because we have teeth, we always want to put hooks to take advantage of them. Uh, on this model that I have here, there's only four teeth left. One, two, three, four. And the framework that was made for this case had four anchors on it. So we took maximum advantage to try to give as many anchors as we can, because that's what holds the partial denture in place. Partial denture has some suction from the actual gum tissue, but a lot of its stability comes from the natural teeth of the patient, which is why partial dentures are superior to complete dentures in terms of retention and stability and function and whatnot, because those teeth have actually kind of function as anchor edge points, which actually give you better retention, thus more comfort. And so partial dentures are usually preferred to complete dentures if you have teeth that are worth it. So guys, that's how partial denture is. If you wanna learn more about the process of how partial dentures are made, I'm gonna put a description in the box to the complete denture video. That's the one you wanna check out after this video. And it tells you basically how dentures are made. And it's pretty much the same process for partial versus complete dentures. You basically start off with an impression, then there's a wax bite, then there's a trying in. And then you go to a finish, you get your partial dentures, you go for adjustments till you get used to it. Okay, so that's how partial dentures are. Let's go ahead and different, uh, discuss the different types of partial dentures that exist. The different types of partial dentures. Guys, there's three kinds of partial dentures. Okay, one of them is an acrylic partial denture, which has these raft wire metal clips. The second type is a cast metal framework partial denture, which has this massive metal framework and then the teeth are baked on top of this. And the last one is a flexible partial denture, which is made from flexible material. Valplast is a brand name and that's a common type of flexible denture. So those are the three types of dentures. Now, let's start off with each one and kind of briefly touch upon it, uh, the pros and cons of each one. So if you're getting a denture, your dentist might tell you what kind of dentures you're getting, although usually they won't get into too much detail. So if you watch this video, you're gonna have a huge advantage over people who haven't, because you know what kind of denture, partial denture you're supposed to get. So these kind of dentures, the first type, the acrylic type, we also refer to them as a flipper, okay? These are actually not permanent <laughs> dentures, okay? These things break easily. There's nothing to give them a stability, you know, as long, after a couple months of chewing, they just crack right in half. And they're very loose because these little raft wire clips are very flimsy and dinkity. So they don't really do much in terms of retention. These are used for temporary basis. So if you're planning on doing dental implants in the future or getting a bridge, you're waiting for the extraction socket to heal, or if you kind of are planning on going into full dentures and you're waiting to pull more teeth, these are designed to have teeth added to them, but they're not a permanent long-term solution, okay? So these things can work for maybe a couple months to a year or two, but usually when you get a denture like this, the plan is to either do implants or something else, or maybe you're waiting for your gums to heal so you can get a more permanent kind of a denture. That can also be another use for it, but you don't want to go on with this kind of a denture for a long term because it breaks and that's the bottom line, okay? So acrylic dentures are, basically the temporary dentures, and they can be used for short terms, you know, when you're doing healing processes and stuff like that. Okay, the next type of denture, and probably the most popular one, are these metal cast framework partials, okay? So in, they may look similar to this, but they have this massive metal framework on the inside with these large metal clips and whatnot, which anchor the teeth really well. So I'm gonna show this to you on what the model would have looked like. Okay, so this patient, again, like I said, had four teeth, and these anchors provide for maximum stability and the little mesh framework prevents this from fracturing. Okay, so these are the metal cast framework partial dentures, if you wanna call them the correct term. They have metal, but they have a lot more metal than the other type of partial dentures, okay? These are permanent dentures and they're very popular. They work really well. They're very tight because these clips are very effective at holding the denture in place. Um, uh, but, like I said, even though they're very popular, there's a couple disadvantages to them. One of them is if the metal breaks, right? So if you drop this thing really hard or if you step on it and the metal breaks, that's it. You need to get a new set. These things cannot really be repaired that easily. And also they do break rather easily, even though there's a lot of metal in them. They're more fragile than you think. So if you drop them, step on them, stuff like that, they can actually fracture. But these things can handle your bite forces because the metal is designed to withstand the bite forces and the clips are designed to really grip your teeth very firmly. Another disadvantage is these things are um, 
damage your teeth at an accelerated rate. So if you're gonna wear a, a partial denture with the metals on it, you always wanna take them out and brush your teeth very diligently, clean them, floss them, and make sure the remaining few teeth that you have left, you give them the best oral hygiene possible. Because if you don't, you're gonna lose those remaining teeth. And, uh, then you have to go to a full denture. So uh, even though the clips are very tight and very nice, they do damage teeth. So that's one of the other disadvantages of the metal cast framework partial denture. The other kind of partial denture is a flexible one. This is a very popular one. The dentists are charging the most for these ones. Like I said, Valclass is a common brand name of a flexible partial denture. These dentures are actually sturdier than the metal ones. I mean, I can't do this to the metal denture. And if you step on it, this thing has a better chance of surviving and not breaking as compared to this thing. So. Uh, they're sturdy, they're very strong, uh, and patients like them because these plastic clips are actually uh, very tight and they're very natural looking. So they look more like teeth uh, and gum tissue. And so they're less visible inside of your mouth versus if you have this thing, the metal can show all over the place. So they're more of an aesthetic uh, kind of a denture as well. Uh, the disadvantage of these guys is it's very hard to add teeth. So if you wanna add a tooth here or there, it's very hard to add any kind of a teeth to a flexible denture because once they shoot the denture, this material is really not designed to have anything added to it. So if you're gonna get a flexible denture, you wanna make sure you're not losing any teeth anytime soon. Otherwise, you may actually end up needing a new denture even if you lose one extra tooth. So it's very hard to uh, repair them. And not everybody ends up liking these dentures. I've had patients where I make a flexible dentures and the actual flexible part really bothers them and they're not comfortable and we end up having to go to a metal cast framework partial. So, you know, everybody's kind of got, got their own comfort level and it's hard to tell what makes a, uh, one patient prefer one to another. But anyways, if you're looking for a permanent dentures, you wanna make sure you don't have a lot of metal anchoring it in place or these flexible pin clips and the flexible dentures. Those are the two types of permanent dentures that actually can last for years, decades, a very, very long time. Of course, the problem with partial dentures doesn't necessarily become with how long the partial dentures last. The problem becomes how long your remaining teeth last. Because a lot of times these anchoring teeth that you have left get infected and now you have to pull them or do a root canal and a crown and keep adding them to the partial denture or adjusting them. So, uh, that's the biggest challenge that most people with partial dentures with a lot of teeth missing have is just keeping their natural teeth, not so much dealing with a partial denture as itself. Okay, but those are the three types of partial dentures. I hope that kind of helped you guys learn a little bit more about them. If you have any questions about them, put them in the comments below. Let's go ahead and discuss the pros and cons of wearing partial dentures. The pros and cons of partial dentures. Okay. Partial dentures are usually made as an alternative to either having nothing in your mouth, just leaving a gap there, or instead of bridges and implants. Okay, now, partial dentures are a lot cheaper than bridges and dental implants. That's a good, so that's one of the advantages of partial dentures, is they're just a lot more affordable. You know, if you're missing one tooth, the cost might not be a lot, but once you get to missing five, six, seven, eight teeth, if you need dental implants, your cost is gonna be in the tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, whereas with a partial denture, your cost is always going to be a couple hundred to a thousand or two usually. We're going to discuss the cost of the partial dentures in the next section, but there's just no comparison. Implants cost way more. Now, of course, again, like I said, if you're missing one tooth, the cost difference isn't that much, so you might just be better off paying the extra money for a bridge or implant. But once you start talking about multiple teeth, three, four, five, six teeth, then yeah, there's a huge difference between getting a partial denture versus a dental implant. I mean, the cost difference can be astronomical, 10, 20 times as much for dental implants. So partial dentures, very economical, very affordable. That's why they're still so popular and so many millions of people have them in their mouth. Uh, they're also much easier to make. I mean, the implant process takes months, years. You know, bridges involve an anesthesia and shaving teeth down and whatnot. For partial dentures, your dentist takes an impression, makes a little cast framework or whatever it is, and within a matter of a couple weeks, couple months, you'll have your partial denture done and you're good to go. So it's just an easier process. There's no pain, there's no needles, there's no surgeries. It's nothing like bridges and dental implants. So it's just an easier process. And some people just don't wanna deal with a lot of headaches. Having a couple teeth missing isn't that big of a deal for them. So they just get a partial denture and call it the day. Uh, it's easier to make and it's much cheaper and it's just a more convenient process overall, especially when you come to bridges and particularly dental implants. Now, those are the pros of partial dentures. Let's go over the cons of them because it can't be all that great, right? Uh, and guess what? They're not. Partial dentures are a hit and miss. Uh, not everybody does well with them. I mean, some people get their partial dentures replacing a couple teeth and they function okay with them. 
but a lot of people don't like them. I mean, partial dentures have nowhere near the chewing efficiency of dental implants or natural teeth. I mean, they're about 30 to 50% chewing efficiency usually, so far less. Uh, they can move, they can cut your gums, uh, and you know, they're just not that comfortable. So, you know, some people do okay with their partial dentures, some people hate them, but nobody loves their partial dentures. I mean, there's nobody who just is in love with their partial dentures. Some people uh, do okay with them, but most people um, kind of are in between, you know, again, some people great, some people not so great, but nobody's like just, you know, absolutely in love with their partial dentures because it's still this big old thing just giving you a couple of teeth. I mean, you still have to have all of the roof of the mouth or your lower jaw covered just to get a couple of teeth, then it's uncomfortable. Uh, another disadvantage of partial dentures is partial dentures actually do damage your remaining teeth at an accelerated rate. So when you end up wearing a partial denture, the teeth become damaged, especially the remaining teeth with the clips on them. So if this is the clip tooth and this is the clip tooth, these two teeth are the most likely to become damaged over time. So what you want to do is if you're wearing partial dentures, you want to take out your partial denture every night and brush those anchoring teeth two to three times as much as you would brush any of your other teeth, okay? You want to go around all of those anchor teeth. So this would be your anchor tooth. You want to brush the front, the back, the inside, the outside. Spend a lot of times uh, brushing your last few remaining teeth, anchoring the partial dentures, because those are the most vulnerable to actually becoming infected and becoming a situation. So if this would be, again, another model, uh, this is the anchor tooth, this is the anchor tooth. You want to take out the partial denture and make sure you spend a lot of extra time brushing these because usually you end up getting a cavity behind this tooth or behind this tooth and these two teeth can end up becoming loose. You could get a root canal, loose and need crown. So the anchor tooth are, need to be paid very close attention to. Um, and then another disadvantage of partial dentures is you could lose them or you could break them. The teeth can wear down. You can drop them, lose them. They can go down the sink, the dock can eat it. Because they're removable, they're vulnerable to damage and loss over time. So a lot of partial dentures need to be replaced. In fact, when we're comparing partial dentures to complete dentures, because there's a few teeth left, you know, partial dentures are at the mercy of your remaining teeth. So if you're gonna end up losing a few teeth, then you have to repair the partial dentures or get a new one. So you always wanna make sure you kind of have a stable set of teeth before you decide to get partial dentures. If you're one of those patients that keeps losing a tooth every year, or two, might not be a bad idea to consider getting a temporary partial dentures and adding the teeth to them until you're at the point where you're either in full dentures or you have a couple solid teeth left to anchor the partial dentures. But you need to plan those things accordingly. And again, each case is different, guys, so I'm not gonna get into it too detail. But that's another disadvantage of partial dentures. They damage teeth, they're not super comfortable, they break, you lose them, etc., etc. And that's why people end up spending a lot of time and money getting bridges and especially dental implants in place of partial dentures because they're just a little bit of a better product in that aspect. Okay, so those are the pros and cons of partial dentures, guys. Let's go ahead and discuss what the cost of typical partial dentures in the United States. Okay, the cost of partial dentures in the United States. As I mentioned, dentures, partial dentures are much less expensive than the alternative options of bridges and implants. So that's the good news, right? Now, how much do partial dentures cost? Well, one of it depends on which material you wanna go with, right? If you decide to get one of these acrylic partial dentures, which are for temporary use, these things shouldn't really cost you more than a couple hundred bucks, really, maybe a thousand at most, something around that much. Uh, if you decide to get a permanent partial denture, then your cost can be a little bit more. And again, it depends on which material you use. You can do the cast metal framework partial dentures, or you can do the flexible partial dentures. And again, each dentist has their own fees and they usually charge you a little bit more or less, but usually <clears throat> the average cost of a partial denture like this is about one to $2,000 per arch, maybe 3,000 if you go to a really fancy office. So if you're doing the upper and lowers, you're looking at somewhere between two to $5,000 for a set of partial dentures for top and bottom. Now that isn't, you know, very little money, but it's not a lot either, because when you compare them to dental implants, one dental implant costs as much as a pair of partial dentures, right? About four or 5,000 bucks. So partial dentures are very inexpensive compared to bridges and dental implants. But again, they're not super cheap either, but yeah, they're very affordable. Compared to everything else that dentists make, they just cost a lot less because they're very easy to make. For dentists, you just take an impression, do a couple tries, boom, your partial denture is done. I don't have to give you needles, do any work, sit down, drill and stuff. So it's an easier process for me. The cost is less. And obviously this is kind of the entry treatment for people who are missing teeth. Um, the cost really doesn't depend on how many teeth missing. I mean, if somebody comes to me with three teeth missing or eight teeth or 12 teeth missing for partial dentures, 
I, usually the cost is pretty much the same. I mean, maybe I'll charge them a hundred bucks more or less for my inconvenience, but the cost of a partial denture doesn't really depend on how many teeth are missing. Uh, it depends on the material that you use. So there is a cost difference between the cheapest material and the most expensive flexible material, typically speaking. Uh, the good news here is partial dentures are usually covered by dental insurances. Now, of course, every insurance is different. They all have their own guidelines. You have to have so many teeth missing, so many contact points, etc., etc. But if your goal in life is to get a partial denture and you have insurance, you might find yourself being lucky because insurances love paying for partial dentures because it's the least expensive treatment that they end up paying for. Now, be, do, do be careful if you end up opting to go for partial dentures with your insurance because usually when insurance pays for your partial dentures, they're not going to cover implants or bridges anymore. So you have to decide, do you want them to help you out with the bridges and implants, which they usually don't anyways, or do you want them to pay for the cheap partial dentures? So that's kind of a decision you have to make. And again, every insurance is different. So I'm just speaking generally broadly about insurances in general. But yeah, insurances are good with covering partial dentures if you meet their criteria. Like I said, there has to be a front tooth or certain number of back teeth missing. And then you can actually use your partial dentures where they cover a portion uh, 50 to 80 percent, maybe all of it, but usually not. And it usually reduces the cost of your partial denture uh, significantly if you have dental insurance. Okay, guys, so check again, each situation is different, so check with your dentist, don't take my word for it. Uh, but again, partial dentures are just not that expensive, and insurance coverage can come in quite handy oftentimes when, if that's something you want to put in your mouth. Okay, guys, it's time for me to share my thoughts on what I feel about partial dentures. Um, as I mentioned, if you guys watch my complete dentures video, I said complete dentures are good. They're fine. You know, a lot of people cannot afford implants for their whole mouth, tens of thousands of dollars. So they get the job done. I'm a fan of complete dentures if, that, if it's working for you. Uh, with partial dentures, the question really becomes is how many teeth you're missing and will the partial denture answer uh, whatever, you know, needs you have. So here's what happens. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, imagine if this is what you're getting. So you have four teeth missing and you want to make a partial denture to replace those four teeth. Uh, what I always suggest is see if you're a candidate for dental implants before you go and commit to partial dentures, okay? Because like, for instance, for this case, you know, four teeth missing. Uh, first of all, you don't need to put four implants. You can put three implants and like gigantic teeth on it to replace them. Maybe even two implants with two huge teeth you might even get their trick on, depends on how many teeth are on the bottom. So will that basically uh, work for you? A couple implants and some partial dentures. Uh, if it does and the cost is more, but if it's something you can afford, then yeah, you go for the implant. You should just skip the partial dentures. Cause like I said, what I don't want to happen is I don't want you getting a partial dentures that's going to sit in your cupboard and you're not going to use it because that happens to a lot of patients, okay? Uh, now, of course, the more teeth you're missing, the more it makes sense to have a partial denture because if you're missing eight teeth in each arch, uh, you have like five, six teeth left, then yeah, I mean, implants are really, really expensive, tens of thousands of dollars. But if you're missing one or two tooth, teeth, three teeth, uh, it usually doesn't make sense getting a partial denture, especially if you're younger and healthier and you have the option of implants because implants is just a better option. So, um, you know, like I said, a lot of different things to take into consideration. Are you a candidate for implants? How many teeth you're missing? How old you are? I mean, if you're, you know, 90 years old with five, six teeth missing, uh, partial denture is probably going to get their cheek done. But if you're a 25 year old with two teeth missing, three teeth missing, then you should find a way to invest more money to get dental implants. Because what partial dentures do is they damage your other teeth. So if you're going to be a long term partial denture where you know, these two anchor teeth are eventually going to get bad, like, you know, maybe five, seven, eight years down the line. And then you're, you end up having to add more and more teeth to the partial denture and you just keep losing more and more teeth. Whereas if you place two, three implants to begin with, you can avoid all of that headache. So, you know, if you can do implants, do implants every single time, you know, if you have to do some research, find a dentist that has better prices, you know, do some homework. I still always am a fan of dental implants over partial dentures if it's an affordable case. Now, like I said, uh, you might have let your mouth go to the point where it's just so many teeth missing that you don't have a choice. It's partial dentures or nothing because, you know, it's tens of thousands of dollars for implants, something you can't afford. Okay, at that point, partial denture makes sense as long as, like I said, you have good enough teeth to hold the denture in place so your teeth are kind of stable. You don't want to get a partial denture and keep losing more and more teeth. So number one, teeth have to be stable, right? You've already done your fillings, crowns, root canals, and now you haven't had dental problems in a while and 
Okay, great. Let's go ahead and make a partial denture to fill in the gaps. And number two, you have to have enough anchorage points, you know, so that the dentist can actually make a nice, comfortable denture, a partial dentures. Uh, and it has to be a nice partial dentures. You have to use the right material. It has to be a nice design. It has to anchor your teeth properly. The bite has to be correct. And if you don't you can actually find yourself using your partial dentures and you might end up being happy with it, okay? But, you know, like I said, because implants are becoming more and more prevalent and the prices are going lower and lower, uh, I'm finding myself doing less and less partial dentures. At the beginning of my career, 15 years ago, I was doing maybe 20 partial dentures uh, a year. Now I'm down to two or three because, you know, when patients come in, we kind of go over the dental implant benefits, pros and cons, and, you know, we give them a fee that they can afford with a payment plan. Almost every single time, patients say, well, let's just do implants. And of course, again, there are patients that just don't want the headaches. They've had partial dentures. They've had dentures for a long time, and they're comfortable, and they're like, no, partial dentures, doctor, that's all I want. Fine, I'll make you a nice partial dentures. Now we have to decide if metal's better or flexible, do the design and whatnot. But you always want to at least give yourself a chance to do the best option, especially if you're only missing a few teeth here and there, not a whole bunch of so yeah, guys, but anyways, partial dentures is definitely better than nothing because if you're leaving gaps in your mouth, uh, it's going to affect your speech, your teeth are going to move, your jaw is going to shrink. Partial denture, to an extent, helps you with all of those. It doesn't help as a result any of those issues completely. I mean, you're still not going to chew at 100% with a partial denture. You're chewing at anywhere from 40 to 50% on average. Uh, it improves your speech and looks, but you know, it doesn't look supernatural. It maybe makes your face wrinkle a little bit less, but not all that much less. So again, partial denture does some of the things that the better treatments like bridges and implants do, but to a much lesser lower extent. So it is better than having nothing because if you have nothing, your teeth start shifting, drifting, and you're just gonna have crooked teeth and uh, you're gonna overstress your remaining teeth. So even though the chewing is maybe 40, 50%, still better than zero percent. So you're better off having this and chewing on this if you have uh, four teeth missing like this patient, uh, than just having no teeth there because now you're putting all your pressure on the opposite side. And again, even with four teeth at 40% is better than no teeth. So again, partial denture is better than nothing and it keeps your mouth stable. And you know what? Sometimes things turn around and you have more money and you can always upgrade to implants. So there's no reason you can't do one or the other. Partial dentures can be used as a space preservation uh, technique in order to get the implants a couple months, years down the line, depending on your schedule and finances. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much how the partial denture is. As long as it's the right fit for the right patient, it may give you somewhat of a... Uh, satisfactory results and it might be some kind of an improvement over having no teeth but again always do your research for dental implants so guys that's pretty much the conclusion i hope this was a helpful video to teach you about the different types of partial their indications pros and cons and when you should go for a partial dentures and when you should not and if you have any other questions please leave them in the comments below and i'll see you guys next time